Hello beautiful friend, it is Teresa from the Pigeon Letters design team. And today we are going to be exploring some monoline drawing and mixing it with some alcohol ink. It's gonna be an explosion of color, but also like the nice black and white monoline drawing that we really love. And I will say at the beginning of this, you may hear my child screaming, but that's because I have to have the window open when I do alcohol ink so like everyone is safe. We're gonna be exploring how alcohol ink works with masking fluid. I'm gonna put my masking fluid down first. That's where I'm gonna end up putting my line drying after I play with my alcohol. And it's gonna be great fun. I have Yupo paper right here. I have some masking fluid. I have a fluid brush. This is just a synthetic brush. It's not super expensive, but I don't wanna use any of my nice brushes because I tend to forget to take the masking fluid off of them and then they get ruined and then I get very, very, very sad. So just get a second set of like cheap, like synthetic brushes that are for masking fluid. I have my 99% isopropyl alcohol using my trusty air blower. I also have a set of monoline pens from who else but the Pigeon Letters. I love these pens because they're archival, they're waterproof, and it comes in all three sizes, which is important when we start talking about adding the detail into the flower that we're gonna draw. Let's get started with the masking fluid. So what I'm envisioning is having a peony, a line drawn peony right here and kind of opening up and then color exploding out of it. How I'm going to prepare for that is I'm gonna take my masking fluid and my paintbrush and I am just going to make like a very just organic sort of shape that's going to be where our flower is going to be. And I want to make sure that I have some of the like movement at the top where you can see like these are going to be where the petals are going to be but because I haven't actually like done the line drawing yet I can't get too detailed yet which is okay and then I want to make sure that this whole section down here doesn't get any alcohol on it or ink on it. All right, so I'm gonna let this dry for a couple minutes. So our second coat, just to make sure everything is covered especially because this paper is so slick, I wanna make sure that these brush marks aren't leaving like open and exposed spaces of paper underneath. All right, now I am gonna go wash this brush so I don't have to get a new one while this dries. Right along where the masking fluid is, is where I'm gonna start the ink explosion. I want it to be blowing out this way. So I'm going to be positioning my blower. I'm gonna move the liquid down as close to on top of the masking fluid on as possible and then push it out. And same up here, push it in a little bit to make sure it gets all the way over that masking fluid. And then over here as well, before this alcohol dries. And now we're just going to play and move our pigment around. The more I spread out the ink, the more you can see it, those underlying pink tones fun to see where it's gathering and making that more like deep sort of wine, purpley red. It's starting to dry. 
I have two choices. I can either reactivate this ink and spread it some more, or I can add new drops of ink into it. Because I do sort of want to play into the whole explosion of color everywhere except for this bottom corner where we have our masking fluid, I am going to drop a little bit more alcohol so we can push this color all the way to the borders. down some alcohol up towards the top of here so the whole page is covered and we can just spread the rest of that pigment now I'm going to put some more color explosions that's their official title and you can see, because I didn't completely dilute the spot before I put the ink down, that I'm gonna have a little bit of a ring mark. So you can see what that looks like. And like I said, it's not bad. It's just, sometimes I don't want it. these together
I'm gonna set this aside to dry and when I come back we will have some fun peeling up the masking fluid. So come along with me as we satisfyingly peel up the masking fluid. A little bit did come through, but I'm not mad about how it looks. I'm just gonna see if we can incorporate some of that line work into the peony. I'm going to start with my largest pen, which is the number five. And I'm gonna start with the bottom petals first. I'm gonna add the line work in with smaller pens and save the middle of the flower for the smallest pen because that will help add definition and draw us into the flower before our eye goes and explores the color explosion that we made. Start with the bottom. It could go in with a pen or with a pencil, but I want this to feel really organic. Going over my line a little bit to make sure that it's that nice dark black that I want. Because this paper is so thick, or I mean slick. There is something that's quite satisfying about drawing on this paper though. If this bothered me up here, I could try and remove it with some of alcohol blending solution. But like I said, it doesn't bother me. You do want to avoid it you can add a third coat over here. Like that. of come off the page like this. Kind of the same here. It's coming off. My hand shakes a lot and I used to let that intimidate me when it came to my line drawing because as you can see my lines are not always all the same thickness. You can see I'm just continuing to build from the outside and then move in. Right here. 
other reason why I'm starting on the outside is because I want to make sure my petals reach all of the border where the color is. Because it would look weird if like my flower ended right here and then there was white. This can be a little new. We're working with the border that our masking fluid made with the alcohol ink and turning those into petals. can see how I'm not really putting, I'm not closing the petal because I'm building those underneath and I don't want to, I don't know where they're going to go yet. So having the ability to sort of leave them open like this as I'm figuring out the placement of everything is really helpful. Try and remember to not close the bottom of your petals yet because well, that's another reason why we're working from the outside in. You can see, because peonies are like all the shapes and all the folds. There's not really any rules, but the petals sort of fold out on each other. You mimic that by how your petals curve in towards the center. I have this slight curve right here to indicate that it's folding in. I think I'm gonna add another pop here. So these circle areas are all like the side top view of the petal and we're gonna differentiate between them once we start adding our line work. So it may seem a little random right now, but there is a method to my madness. You can have this down to about here so I don't know what I'm gonna add here yet but then look this forms this petal quite nicely we'll need to add a little bit to the top right here so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go down So I'm going to go up. I'm going to add another little top right here. So there's going to be air right here, 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 and then the middle. I want this along like so.
this right here is gonna be a little tiny petal. This right here is gonna be a little tiny petal. So in the middle is where I'm gonna build out, what's this little part called? You know, the opening part of the bud. I'm gonna go ahead and grab my number one and I'm gonna think about the direction that I want it to go, which is up, point our eye in the up, start at the bottom right here, just add little tiny new shapes. Okay, and so I want to make sure that it's a little rounded. I'm going to start at the top again and make the shape. You know, like a little too perfect, so I'm just going to go in some places and add extra to give it that sort of illusion that everything is falling on top of each other okay so i'm gonna go ahead and put away my number one take out my number three so i can finish my line work all of the tops are not gonna get a ton of line work added to them some small lines to show that it's curving. For instance, I'm going to add I guess I should probably do that thing with the paper to guard myself now because this is guide. It's just going to have a couple lines to show us that show us the movement of that petal for the inside part of these petals we're gonna go ahead and add the line work here. Create the folds of the flower, that this part is shaded to differentiate ourselves from the top part of the flower. And add in some lines. You see, this is doing the same thing that these lines are doing is it's showing the movement from the inside of, of the leaf which is why we don't need to then add a lot of line work on the outside right here so we don't want to fight the detail but because like petals like this don't have the inside part we can add it on the outside Oops. don't be like me. Like this. Because these petals are hiding behind other petals, you aren't going to get to see as much of that line work detail, but we still do want to indicate that those petals have movement underneath them. So we're just going to add some lines. We want to make sure that our lines match the direction that we are indicating that the petal is going. As I'm moving around, I'm slightly turning the curve of my line work so it follows the petal. The same thing here.
So of course my video stopped recording right at the end. So you couldn't see me actually complete the flower, but you can see just continuing to go around all of the petals, add in the line work so you can really get that detail in. I hope this tutorial inspires you to do a little mixed media project with some mono line work and a color explosion of your choice. But when you do, make sure you tag me, Teresa Haddo, and Peggy at The Pigeon Letters so we can see what we were able to inspire. I think that we were successful with our color explosion. And we have a wonderful peony to bring us joy. Thanks for hanging out, friend. I'll talk to you later.